Kakistocracy. Kakistocracy. K-A-K-I-S-T-O-C-R-A-C-Y. Kakistocracy. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. There's a, a beauty of a word, isn't it? Right. This is Committee Featuring. My name is Vic, and welcome to the show. Today, we have the pleasure and honor to talk to someone amazing. He's a politician, but not just any politician, a party leader. He's a father, and also someone who a lot of People of younger generation look up to and consider him as an idol. And of course, he speaks English fluently. Welcome to the show, Kun Tim. So they clap. Thank you for having me. It's good uh, to be here. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Yeah, it's good to be back at the standard too. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, how's everything? Good in life so far. Good. A bit sleepy I mean, in the morning. I yeah. still need my uh-huh. cup of joe, but okay. I'll be okay. Okay. I'm so sure. the year of rabbits treating you well still. So far, yes, I started off at Disneyland, so not wow, much that's to the best complain. place on earth. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's probably a last chance for mm-hmm. me to spend some time with my daughter before the election starts. Yeah, so I got to I got to bribe her a little bit, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we we spent it in um, Hong Kong Disneyland, uh, mm-hmm. just in the hotel mm-hmm. area, and, yeah. and two days as, at Disney. Uh-huh. Uh, my head was about to fall off, but I survived. <laughs> and, and so I, I bet she's having a great time. I hope to, I hope so too, but yeah. then she probably <laughs> understands that like, right. she won't have uh, an access to a father for a couple of months <laughs> during the campaign trail. But yeah. but I hope to mm. bring her along, you know, oh, when I okay. when I travel through the city, and and that's what has been the the experience, you know, of just like learning at school and as well as, as learning on the ground okay. when her father was traveling around the country. So mm-hmm. so. so let's start off with uh, the thing we call the five words. Game is kind words. of a game. Yeah, Five words. since our show is called comedy, so yeah, we are big on words. So we'd like to learn about your words. Right, probably. Give it to me. Yeah, your bring thing. it on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So number one, what is your all-time favorite word ever in English? Kintsugi. I know it's not English. It's it's Japanese. Right. But it's being translated in English a couple of times. You know, it's a a way of life in Japan. That if you speak nowadays in Manhattan or in Copenhagen, people understand what they mean. Kintsugi is pretty much a Japanese uh, art ritual that when something is broken, it's, it gets mended by the by lacquer and gold powder. I mean, it's such a beautiful word. It's just such a beautiful concept that gives you hope. You know, hope floats. You know, that kind of thing. Whatever is broken can be fixed. And can be even more uh, beautiful, you know. Just to be clear, my Japanese is teten wakarimasen ne. Wow. Uh, That's pretty fluent. I, I go to Tokyo watashi wa Tokyo e ikimas ikimasho ikitai ikimashita. All those things I, I just simply give up. Right. But um, you know, I I try to learn it through. Mm-hmm. Um, watching Netflix and hopefully a committee would come up with Japanese so I can finally reach my dream of uh, mastering a third language ap- apart from uh, English or Thai. But I think that's my favorite wor- word. I think that's a way of life. That's mm-hmm. something that you need in Thai politics. <laughs> and that's something that you need in this kind of economy, you know, in this kind of state of the world, I think mm-hmm. kintsugi it's something that, that you know, whatever's uh, broken in the first place can be even more beautiful if you put attention to it and if you don't mm-hmm. give up. So mm-hmm. that's my all-time favorite word. Mm-hmm. And what is your latest new word that you have just learned? Philavery, P-H-I-L-A-V-E-R-Y. Phil- Say it again. Philavery. 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 Uh, I actually have a book about it to show you guys. Wow. Uh, Philavery means a treasury of unusual words. Oh, Um, okay. And this book is from 2006. It's one of the first books that I bought when I reached America for my uh, graduate study. And I fell in love with the book because it has so many unusual words like, you know, uh, kakistocracy, kakistocracy, K-A-K-I-S-T-O-C-R-A, CY. It means a system of government in which the rulers are the least competent, 
least qualified or most unprincipled citizens. You know, it, it comes up with all these uh, unusual, you know, beautiful words that, you know, take your edge right off at the end of the day. So it's, a, it's, a, it's one of my favorite books also, but I couldn't remember what the book's uh, name was or is, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I felt like, you know, when I first introduced, when I was first introduced to Kamni D, and I felt like if I were to translate your show into an English word, it would be philavery. Wow. That's a lot better than what I had in my mind. Like, oh, this word is good. It's like nothing but philavery. Okay, I'm going to start using this word more. Yeah, yeah. Okay, exactly. that's such that's, a great that's word. That's something I learned. I know about the book, but I couldn't like put my mind to it. It was right. a mouthful right here. Mm -hmm. And then I went back home that I, I knew I was going to come on the show. And then I looked in, the book, in, in my book shelf and I found it. And okay, it's called philavery. Wow. A treasury of unusual words. Mm. And I can see that you actually... Kakistocracy. You know? Wow. <laughs> That's a good word too. We really need to like start using does it, that does word as well. Does it ring a bell? Does it ring a bell? Which yeah. kind of... Uh, <laughs> I think kind of, <laughs> kind of, yeah. That's a good word to use. Yes, exactly. Okay, and I can kiss Tokersi. And I see that you still like read the physical book, like that real paper, bound into a real book. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You you're calling me old, but yes, that's fine. <laughs> I think that's classic. I, love it. I just I just write and read. You know, mm. when I, I I don't have the idea, I read. When I have the idea, but I can't really articulate it, then I write. Okay. So I think that's that's something mm. that, that yeah. is uh -huh. you know, the best thing for me. Yeah. So you're not that big on like typing and reading from digital devices? Used to, but not anymore. I mean, when yeah. I was uh, like first time jobber, when you really needed to learn how to use PowerPoint and Excel and Microsoft Word and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the days, you know, Microsoft 1997 or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, back in those days, yes, I mm -hmm. needed to learn how to type. In, but now that right. um, I have someone to do it for me, so I, yeah. I just read nice. and write. And I think that's a nice habit to have and keep. Yeah. All right. To read and write, right? To read and write. And speak. Yeah. And speak, and, of course. And connect with one another. Right. Yeah. 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 So let's go to the third word. Uh -huh. You have mentioned your daughter. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about her. Okay. What is the one quality word that you and your daughter have in common? Uh -huh. Do you want a sugar coated one or a real oh, both, one? Both, please. <laughs> I mean, it's a duty of a, a daddy to embarrass yeah. their, their daughters. So yeah. if it's sugar coated, it's punctuality. Okay. It's punctuality. I mean, mm -hmm. Given my hectic schedule, you know, I gotta wake up in the morning, make sure she gets to school on time. Then I go to the parliament. Um, so punctuality is something that is really important for us, and that's a sugar-coated one. Yeah. Uh, the real one would be creepy. I think what? I don't know where she learned that from, <laughs> but um, when we were watching a movie on Netflix on our show, and she was she was saying the movie is creepy. Creepy. Uh, and then okay. if the food is not delicious, the food is creepy. If what? the dress is not pretty, and then she said the dress is creepy. So, so oh, I have no idea. Qualities. Don't ask me where she got it from, but I have no idea where she got it from. But everything that is not good is creepy to her. So that's something that is like, you know, when we spend our uh, quality time together and only uh, two of us knew mm -hmm. <laughs> back then, now everybody knows. Sorry, people. I mean, like yeah. I said, it's a job of me to embarrass you, <laughs> or daddy to embarrass daughters. So, but, um, but because of that, then, you know, if you're in our household, if you're our Alexa, for example, in, okay. in our house, then you hear the word creepy a lot. Creepy, creepy, creepy. <laughs> Sorry about that, people. <laughs> so you, you speak English with her too? And uh, she both, languages, speak, both languages. Both languages, I okay. think, uh, is bo right. both important. Mm -hmm. uh, she picked up Chinese a little bit. Uh, she went, so she started in a Japanese um, kindergarten, in international kindergarten. So she picked that up a little bit, you know, from mm -hmm. mingling with her friends uh, in class, from the teachers, um, from watching um, Midnight Diner with me or something oh, yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. I like that one too. Um, and then now she's uh, in another school now, in a primary school. And then the school splits two languages between two semesters. The first one was Chinese. Mm. So during this Hong Kong trip, she was boasting uh -huh. her Whoa. language proficiency in front of me. <laughs> yeah. uh, and this semester is French. So she, wow. she's coming home and 
and like you know, again showing her like French five, prowess. I, I'm counting five languages so far, like Thai, no, no, English. No, she can't even order like, food. I mean, <laughs> yeah, she she uh-huh. speaks English and Thai, mm-hmm. you know. But for All those right. three languages, are just pretty much like samples for okay. for, for her to learn. Yeah, and, but you would love whichever, her to whichever whichever she prefers. That's that's her choice. But I think mm-hmm. like she would be able to say which one is nose and ears in all five languages, right. or count numbers and things like yeah. that. And would you say you would encourage her to learn more than like two languages? It's really like up three, to her. Three, four, five. It's really up to her. It's her life, uh, not mine. So okay. my job is to be the platform that allows her to, to pursue uh, whatever she, she likes. You know, try out an era at this age. I mean, we're talking about a seven-year-old here, so... Uh, it's pretty much a trial and an era process, whether it's you know uh, music, dancing that she sees from uh, Blackpink or cooking shows from from Bake Squad on Netflix uh-huh. or learning ukulele or languages, or whichever. Um, mm-hmm. I think, and that's the right to all the children in the world, and, and that's that separates education from learning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Education is one thing, learning is one thing, and I think you know if you want the child to really learn, it's got to be something that comes from within. So mm-hmm. uh, it's not really up to me, it's up to her. Yeah. But I'll, I'll try my best to, be, to, to make sure that I am able to provide. You know. mm-hmm. So talk a little bit about your big plan for the education for Thailand that mm-hmm. you're about to mm-hmm. like, propose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what, what would be the main philosophy mm-hmm. besides education and learning as you have just said? Anything uh, else mm-hmm. that you want to stress? Curriculum for the 21st century, you know, has to be decentralized and not uh, over centralized, mm-hmm. like how the government is doing with their education uh, bill that was discussed in Parliament last week. If mm-hmm. any of you were following, they wanted to do a super board with the prime minister on top. Yeah. So everything that is being discussed, whether it's in Phuket or Chiang Mai, rather than decentralized, they want to centralize everything. Uh, they want to have KPIs for you. So if, if you're a six euro, a seven euro, or eight euro, or nine euro, or whatever, you got to have your, you know, uh, KPIs in what you should be able to do and not be able to do. You know, those are the things that it's more adult centric rather than student centric. Mm-hmm. They want to be able to evaluate teachers even more, and that means more detailed work. That is non-teaching task for the teachers. And also a silo uh, budgeting for, you know, this is for food, this is for clothing, this is for uniform, this is for books. You can't really have the autonomy to, to use the, the budget. So, right. so in summary, that's student-centric, decentralized curriculum, uh, autonomous budget, and give the teachers back to the classroom. You know, that's pretty much four pillars of our education act that is a total opposite of what the prime minister is is proposing, and I think it's it's time for it. I mean, it, it's it's going to be disrupted. I mean, mm-hmm. if you don't change yourself, the world is going to change it for you. I mean, what kind of mm-hmm. education system that you put so much money? You know, mm-hmm. Edu- uh, education ministry is one of the highest uh, receiver of the budget. national budgets of our tax money. Thai students are one of the highest hard work hardest working students in the entire region, mm-hmm. but we came out 50 or 70 in, but hardest in the working outcome. in the classroom. So the input yes. is like this, outcome is like this, something's mm-hmm. wrong with the system. The system is mm-hmm. broken. So yeah. you, gotta, you gotta reverse it. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it seems like you're on the roll here. So maybe it's a good time to go to the next word, mm-hmm. which is the one word that you think the world or our country mm-hmm. would be better off without. Because it's election season, I'm going to say gerrymandering. Gerrymandering. G-E-R-R-Y-M-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G. Gerrymandering. 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 Gerrymandering is a political technique that manipulates districts. So it's something that if you're at the sitting government would use this kind of system, how you draw the districts to your advantage. And that happens everywhere all around the world, whether it's America, whether it's in Europe, whether it's Australia, whether it's Thailand. And that's something that keeps me awake at night now with the election committee, mm-hmm. not really drawing the, the right districts for people to really go down and you know, get some votes. Chiang Mai District 2 becomes District 8. District 8 becomes District 
three. And that's one of the techniques uh, for any incumbent or any sitting government to remain in power and make the election um, unfree and unfair. So Google the gerrymandering. Another good uh, if word. It's not, if it's not an election season, I would say parasite. You know, parasite. Right? parasite. It's something wow. that lives of another creature in the form less than a unit. And, and I think you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm. Rings another bell. Okay. Mm. All right. So I, I'm sure you're going to be enjoying talking about the next <laughs> word too. So what is the one word that never fails to annoy the heck out of you? Soft so you power. Have <laughs> soft power. <laughs> soft yeah. power. Soft power. It's, a, it's, it's an overused term. And mm -hmm. most of the time people don't understand what they mean. You know, soft but it's power, a good word by itself, right? Soft power comes from... Uh, a professor called, I think his name is Joseph Nile, and he was a professor at my school, and he coiled the term soft power. Power is to get someone to do what you want. You could do it through a missile, you could throw it through a sanction, you could do it through diplomacy, you could do it through art, you could do it through a way of life like Kintsuki or uh, Hookah or uh, Nixon or, uh, or Sisu of Finland, for example. But it's not like just creative economy, if you know what I mean. It's not just like eating durian or things like that. It's, right. it's, it's really a way of life that it has to be authentic, you know. If it was uh, Sweden, for example, that wanted to use equality as a soft power, they really uh, favor marriage equality, racial equality, mm. but they, they do walk the talk. You know? It yeah. can't be that, you know, we have series Y or we have some of our cre creative ent entertainment, but we refuse. Uh, marriage equality bill that, that my party is proposing. Yeah. I mean, it's fake. Right. It's just not real. It's just yeah. not really in your DNA and things uh -huh. like that. So you know, it could be considered as a creative industry, but it's not really a soft power. Yeah. And it's, the tomb is really misused. Mm -hmm. And it annoys the hell out of me when, when it's not the same. Yeah. So, so for your own definition of the soft power, how, what it should look like or, and, and also how we should use it? It's uh, power is to get someone to do what you want. Yeah. And it's something that is not forced. That's soft power. Right. You know, it's yeah. something that you're, you're not threatening them, threatening them with uh, a torpedo or a drone, uh, mm. a striker drone, things mm. like that. That's all hard power. It's not sanction. It's not like if you don't, you know, allow the Chinese visitors to come in, you know, without checking the visas, I'm going to, mm. uh, you know, uh, oppose the same measure against you. But it's really the sense that I wanted to uh, buy Korean products because I believe in the quality and because my, of my favorite uh, actor or actress or band use it. Mm -hmm. you know, these are the things that is soft power. So, I mean, it's a term that when it's right, it's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's something that is hard to identify, but when, you, when it's right, then you, can, you kind of feel it, you know, it's not creative mm -hmm. industries, it's not just music, it's not just food, it's not just mm -hmm. Thai boxing, but it's mm -hmm. really, you know, a way of life, a way of yeah. the things that you could get someone to buy your products, to come to your country, or mm -hmm. to really look up to you, like mm -hmm. how some of us, like, look up to Nordic countries, for yeah. example, for their welfare state, and, mm -hmm. you know, for their way of life. Mm -hmm. so, so in your opinion, what kind of our soft power, I mean, from the Thai soft power that has the most chance? Uh, marriage equality. You know, it, we are very uh, welcoming, you know, regardless of uh, gender. You know, it doesn't matter uh, what gender you are as long as, you know, you are uh, happy with who you are and you perform to, to society. Uh, the, the level of tolerance is much higher than in ma majority of the countries. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we do pass the bill, it will be like the second Taiwan, for example. Taiwan is the first, was the first country that passed the bill and they benefit uh, um, like a whole lot from it, not just mm -hmm. uh, the LGBTQA uh, community, but the ent contra entire country as a whole, the branding of the country, mm -hmm. you know, and also, you know, the authenticity that comes from it, rainbow economy that comes after it. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that is our strength. Diversity is our strength. Um, that's what we're telling the world, you know. Uh, tolerance is part of the Thai culture, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, all those economic benefits that come after it, you know. 
the creative industry, the textile industry, the fashion industry, I mean, that's just peripheral. Mm. But I think it's, you know, the branding of, of the entire country that is a, a platform lift for all of our people, products, government. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best thing that we can do. A quick win. Yeah. So I'd like to move on to... For our uh, soft power, and that's the last time I'm going to say it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'd like to move on to the next thing that I'm sure we can learn a lot from you because you are a leader of your party and in many, many contexts. So a lot of people are talking about leadership nowadays, mm -hmm. that it, this is a time that leadership would mean a lot. Mm. And we really need a great leaders. Mm. So let's talk a little bit about that. Mm. Maybe talk a lot about that. Mm. So you are we'll a leader. Yeah, mm. you are a leader, right? Mm. So what kind of leader do you see yourself as? Like, what kind of leader are you? Um, to answer the question directly first, uh, it's uh, servant leadership. Servant leadership is a servant first. It's a kind of leader that listens more than they, more than they talk. Um, they produce leaders more than followers. Um, your problem is my problem. Uh, it's a leader that uh, doesn't mind not being in the limelight. I mean, if uh, other MPs are better than me at some of the things, I don't mind. You know, they don't have to give it to me for me to perform in front of the public. You go ahead because you can do it better. And I want more leaders in the party rather than followers. You know. Um, but that's the first thing, just to answer your question directly without yeah, dodging. Um, the second thing is leadership is a second annoyance word after soft power to me. Yeah. To me, leaders, leadership is like swimming, you know. It can be taught. Yes, it can be taught. I could teach you how to swim. You got to do an S curve. Yeah. With your arm, and you gotta right. look it up, and you gotta uh -huh. make sure you synchronize with your legs. And how to breathe but and stuff like that. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to lead, mm. or you wouldn't be able to swim for real if you don't get kicked into the pool. Right. Like and, swimming and really for your life. practice mm. uh, leadership. You know. I see. So yes, leadership has to know the way, show the way, go the way. Uh, leaders decide, speak, communicate, persuade, listen. All those things, you could Google it up. I mean, you don't have to like really hear it from me in this show to waste your time. But I think uh, it's, it's really like swimming. And to distinguish between an effective leader and not effective, not so effective leader, is the ability to distinguish or to decide whether you become a leader or a boss to someone. Mm -hmm. so, so if, you, if you were giving me a sentence, like if we were taking a hypothetical elevator, if you have one, you know, <laughs> up to this floor, and I only have that much time to speak with you, right. what, what's an effective leader is the ability to decide when you become a boss or a leader. Mm -hmm. Because people are different. You know, right. it's probably, it, it probably rings a bell to whoever's listening that in your team, there's someone that need a leader you know, because they know exactly what to do. You just need to tell them the time you need to work, the criteria you need to work, and you gotta give them freedom. You gotta give them autonomy to produce the work that they want. That's the kind of person, you know, yeah. one type of person. But on the other hand, you have to understand that there's someone that needs more guidance, yeah. more mentorship, you know, more push, mm -hmm. and that's when you become the boss. I mean, yeah. if you look at you know, I, I graduated my master's degree in leadership, public policy majoring in leadership. And if you look at leadership books, and if I were to ask a question in this room, you know, what's better, leaders or bosses? Leader or boss? I think majority, majority of you would say leader, because right. that sounds right. right. That's it's a fun make me cry. Mm -hmm. That's in the philosophy. It sounds right, but it's actually not right. You know, it's yeah. a make me cry. Yeah. Um, but in real life, when you want to get something done and, and you want to really uh, reduce the, the toxicity within your team, you got to be able to look at your organization or your team and see if this guy needs a leader or this person needs a boss. Okay. A good one, obviously, not a not a right. not a bad one. Not, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, you did, so it's so. not like one thing is better than that than the other, and we should get rid of the one, this one, and only be this one. We need to be both. The right one. 
the right one the to right the right one. person for, for, for the right person right so if you so you're not if just you have that ability that you you could distinguish and you know, it's just coaching men, mentoring decision making communication mm-hmm. listening i think that will get tweaked according right. to mm-hmm. to the model that you're trying to do i think that's one of the things that is not in the textbook mm-hmm. and 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 if you really get your hands dirty and you roll up your sleeves you 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 agree yeah. with me i think so you're not just only one type of leader that means if i go and talk to each and every one of your member the team member they might give different answers and and that is not wrong hopefully It, yeah. hopefully i i think the the last caveat is to make sure that they feel that you're not double standards i see when it comes to these things uh-huh. but you got to be able to do a expectation management you got to okay. be able to not just talk to a, a certain individual but as well as you know you got to be able to talk to the team that you have yeah. to understand that people are different yeah uh, some people learn in different ways and right. that's why you got to manage them like that yeah that's pretty <coughs> tricky isn't it because it's a tricky it's yeah. a tricky thing it's a right. tricky thing because uh, they uh, you can be seen as very flexible with one mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. and very strict with another mm-hmm. but that's because you know how to treat them and you know get the mm-hmm. effective work mm-hmm. out of them mm-hmm. but for someone who might not understand the they key, might say that you're biased or something the key success factor is time you got to be able to do a lot of expectation management before it happens before oh. all those uh, like political politic like corporate mm. politics mm. come out you got to be able mm. to like the reason why i'm doing this is because this the reason why i'm doing this is mm. because this before it happens because if it happens and you know it just the the peripheral of it the right. virality of it it just must so you good. do that by talking to them a lot Hopefully, yes, like hopefully. communicate, keep com- communicating, and yes, yes. yeah, adjust and make yes. sure the expectations yes. are aligned. Yeah, that's something yeah. I need. I still need to improve. Though. I mean, it's yeah. still time is something that is a commodity of uh, right. of deficit of shortage for mm-hmm. me. <laughs> or it could go very wrong. Oh, it takes more time, or it, yeah. it takes more time that in I the see. sense that people mm-hmm. will start to understand mm-hmm. but, uh, as long as you have the expectation management uh, beforehand of what can be done what's not can what not mm-hmm. to be done and things like that okay. and i'm here to serve you you know it's a kind of right culture that you know if you say that your problem is my problem and i'll try my best to serve you but you got to understand me that you know i have my uh, priorities and limits but you know I, it's like um, right. i'm i empathize okay. with the problem it's not just like i want to get this done and i just leave you with you know a whole bunch of foxes and things like that yeah So um, well, we all know that everybody is different. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to your party member and you as a leader, uh-huh. what would be one quality that you expect all of your member have? Like you can be all different the way you want, but this is one thing that I want all of you to have, mm-hmm. and this is not nego- this is not negotiable. You must have um, it. Ideology and efficiency. You know, when I start um, interviewing people, you know, you know, I would start off with why politics, mm. and why this party, and why now, and not uh, four years before, and not the next election. Right. I mean, if you, if they answer these uh, three questions to me, I would be able to tell. I would be able to tell quite quickly. Right. Um, Whether they have the right ideology for the party, because mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta really be able to explain to me why this party, rather yeah. than the twenty, three, four, five yeah. parties uh-huh. available in our political system, right? And they gotta they gotta really tell me why politics. I mean, it's not a it's not a it's a mm-hmm. two word question for mm-hmm. me. Is because I think the country can and I think I can. I mean, I think right. that's the reason why I do politics. Mm-hmm. Um, and why now is also uh, something that is you know you got to really think through yourself. You got to internalize these questions before you could articulate them. So so mm. these are the things that I test to see if they have the ideology or not. Uh-huh. Um, and also efficiency is one of them because you know you could say that you you have the move forward way, but you don't get things done. I mean mm-hmm. nobody is going to vote yeah. for you on. And, yeah. And there's no need for you to be in to mm-hmm. be in politics in the first place. Right, you know, walk the talk, as you yeah, mentioned before. Exactly. Yeah. And But the fourth question is, what keeps you awake at night? By the way. Uh, okay. 
All it's right. A, it's, it's a kind of question that tests um, the last time you failed. You know, it, it tests your critical thinking, it tests analysis, it tests communication, it tests persistence, uh, it tests your ability to think on your feet and answer, you know, so those are like three or four questions that you could yeah. really uh -huh. tell uh, right. about a person. Yeah. <clears throat> I would love to hear some of the examples of the best and the worst answers to those questions that you used to ask uh, each candidate. Do you remember, <laughs> like, wow, this is such a great you, answer, or you, this is the worst one yet? Are you really for it? Yeah, sure. Um, I feel like nobody wants to join my party now. Now I have no <laughs> talent pipeline okay. of whoever joins the party. Yeah. How many ping pong balls can you fit at 747? Wow. <laughs> uh, okay, you know, for these kind of brain teaser questions, and I think the kind of quality that you look for uh, in an organization, especially at the very young age, you know, is the ability to ask the right question. Mm. Not to be able to give answers. Of course, you have to be able to analyze, you have to be able to communicate, you gotta be able to listen to feedback and all those things that you can Google them up or you can read somewhere else. But mm -hmm. I think if you, it boils down to one sentence of what's the kind of characteristic that I look for people who join my team is the ability to write, to ask the right question. Because you'll be able to come up with the answers later on. And especially right. with the kind of environment, with the kind of ecology, you could come up with answers rather quickly mm -hmm. through the technology or through asking someone else, but you gotta be able to ask the right question. Mm -hmm. But let me be clear, you know, at the very uh, young age, uh, when you start off your career, ask all the questions. Don't think whether it's right or wrong, but you know, if you ask the questions, um, if you ask the right question, it will be better. But if uh, you know, by all means, ask all the questions. Mm -hmm. But for me to ask that kind of question, you know, how many ping pong ball can fit in a 747, you could, oh, sorry about this. Did I hurt some of your expensive equipment? <laughs> uh, then I see two kinds of candidate polls. One that asked the question back, in order for me to answer your question, sir, I have to know the diameter of a ping pong ball, and I have to know the diameter of the 747. I don't remember how you could come up with the volume of, of each, uh, but do you, can you give me a, the answer to that? But if I don't have the answer to that, I'll be able to Google it up right away. Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of people who ask the right question, mm -hmm. and they don't have the answer, but they, they have hypothesis or they have options in order to come up with the right answer. And that's the kind of people you need in the team in this kind of volatile uh, working environment, whether it's in politics or in the private mm -hmm. sector, mm -hmm. in this kind of world when you know, suddenly you get COVID, suddenly you get geopolitical hotspots all around the world. You know, it's mm -hmm. not just like whoever absorbs from the textbook of how to come up with uh, uh, a stock valuation and you apply it right away. You gotta be able to come up with a new way of doing things. So you gotta be able to like ask the right question in order to come with, with that. And the other, the other kind of candidate poll that just like sits still and like could do uh, nothing about it because they didn't know how to like yeah. critically think and ask the right question or don't have the bravery to ask back. And right. that's really something, you know, in the middle, uh, if you're in the middle management or if a leader of an organization, that's really something that you would just like it's music to your ears when someone asks you questions, like rather than waiting mm -hmm. for the deadline of your presentation, you have nothing on paper. Yeah. So I think that's, that's something that you know, separates out uh, uh, yeah. people who, who you would like to be in the team or not. Something mm -hmm. that, that I, I would really, really appreciate. Yeah. yeah, I really like that the bravery to ask questions or at least to ask back because a lot of people might feel like you have to come up with the right answers. And if you don't know, that's stupid and then you're done. But, but no, you, you can ask back and you can find answers. But to, to be fair, it's really, you know, it takes two to tango. So it's not just them having the bravery, but also you having the flexibility or this kind of serving leadership to listen and really let them ask questions. And then, um, 
without judgment, you yeah. know, that's something that you got you got to really show. Mm. And then you have to make sure that you know the ability to ask questions strategically improves over time. So the probability of asking a wrong question, mm. which you know, some, it's debatable which one is right, which one is wrong, right? But um, the probability of asking the ideal question improves over time as you work mm. with the newer generation. Yeah. So there's one quote, quite famous quote, about politics and probably about life in general too. Mm -hmm. So there's no permanent friends or permanent enemies in politics. Do you agree or disagree with that? I think I agree. Mm, just like uh, death and taxes, it's quite certain um, um, in life. You know, that's impermanence. If you're a Buddhist, um, that's like. That's the beauty of being a human being, because people can change the way they believe and the way you think. You could be friends one day, but then you could be foe uh, the next day. But mm -hmm. someone that you uh, despise so much uh, could be your best friends also. I think that's the beauty of being a human being that other creatures don't have when mm -hmm. it comes to um, adaptation and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I would agree, I think. But as a politician, there might be some people of uh, who has some kind of ideas or mindset that you can never be friends with. Do you mm -hmm. agree? Come again? Like as a politician, uh, they have agendas. Mm -hmm. They have um, things that they need to get done as in the name of like politics mm. or what they believe in. Mm -hmm. So there might be someone or mm. some part mm. of the party that you can never be friends with. That's true and untrue as like change and inertia. Uh, but definition of leadership is constant struggle to make change happen. You know, you gotta you gotta struggle, and you gotta make change happen. If change happens, by itself, no need for leaders. Uh, if it's a, a struggle, a constant struggle, but there's no change, then that's not a leader. Also, it's just mm -hmm. someone who runs around in a circle all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so because of that, that's true. That's there's always inner shear within the system. And there's always a resistance to change, but I think you know both you and I know too well that the world has changed a lot, and the world has progressed a lot. You know, it's, it's a zigzag for sure, all around the world. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a straight line, but I'm sure. But I'm sure that if you give it a fair assessment and look back at the world that we have come so far. Uh, yeah. Look back at this country we have come so far, yeah. and but 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 part of your question is right that there's always some resistance or some inertia within the system that is not free. Like it's not going to change by itself. Like freedom is not going to come by itself. Equality is not going to come by itself. We got to fight for it. I think that's that's the mm -hmm. part that is untrue about it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like you still have a lot to do or you want to achieve in politics, but you have once said. In one of your interview, that you can see yourself working as a political uh, person for for another 10 years, and then you have another big goal to become the UN Secretary General. You once said that, right? You know, I'm I'm 42. Yeah, just so supposedly I live on to an, an average age of ties of about 80. So I'm, um, I'm in my midlife, you know, if this is, was a roof of your house, I've reached at the top at the peak, and then another uh, 40 years of my life. So I didn't want to waste uh, time, so I wanted to make sure that the, the secondary 40 is not the same as the primary 40, <laughs> where I have some plans, you know. So I planned it uh, a little bit about my life in, in four different decades, you know. Ah. The first 10 years, I want to be politics, and I want to really like push myself on it, and I want to like sacrifice majority of my time, uh, try my best uh, within that for, for 10 years. I'll be obsolete in 10 years. I mean, you know, I mean, the kind of challenges that is going on is quite quick in the sense that you know you got to be able to pass the baton to the next uh, generation leader. And part of being a leader, uh, part of leadership is to have some succession plans so that people could come after that. And, you know, It could be Kunta uh, Eight years from now, he'd be out of it and, and, and I would <laughs> yeah. pass the baton to him, for example. Right. Mm -hmm. um, for 10 more years, I want to be in international organization just because I think Thailand can and I can. You know, I uh, was in a school, uh, a political school, school of public policy that 
uh, Ban Ki Moon graduated, and Kun Surakia Satyendai graduated. And at that time, before military coup back in 2005, 2006, there was a round of Asia of presenting or of electing uh, UN secretary from Asia. Yeah. And I think the two contestants were, um, or key contestants were uh, Ban Ki-moon from South Korea and Kun Sura Gyeser from Thailand. And then military coup shut that down. Yeah. And I felt like, uh, and then when I reached the school, it was a forum, it was a town hall in the school and then Ban Ki-moon came and then he was like, okay, it's good to be back at JFK School of Government. My school was uh, formed or was started by John F. K., JFK, uh, John F. Kennedy School of Government. So it was started by the president JFK. And uh, he was joking that JFK is just from Korea, you know? <laughs> and, and then he was like uh, telling his vision about his first term as uh, UN secretary, which is good, which was good. Um, but I felt like uh, Thailand has a chance to, and I wanted to try it out and reform one of the biggest mm -hmm. uh, governments and right. uh, you know bureaucracies yeah. uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, you know, joking aside, you know, lighter side aside, I feel like, for example, UNSC, as uh, is not was, is still a product of the last conflict. You know, the people uh -huh. on UNSC. Yeah. Uh, is there, uh, some of the countries that are on UNSC are there just because they won World War II, Russia, for example. Mm -hmm. you know. But large economies like Japan, like Germany, are not on those lists, despite you know, the kind of improvement, the kind of development that they have done for the past 20, 30, 40 years. So I felt like that's a kind of reform so that we have the world, the global order that... Um, um, that can uh, make sure the world um, moves forward, you know, and we want to make sure that right is might and not might is right. Mm -hmm. Right is might means, you know, you, you stick to the principle and the and principle matters rather than might is right. I mean, that means who has the biggest, uh, the most modern weapon rules the world. So I felt like on a more uh, heavy Mm -hmm. uh, more of a substance, substantial right. side of it. I feel like mm -hmm. there's a need for me to, there's a need for um, the world to change as well. And mm -hmm. I can't see why not come from a Thai politician, rather you have to wait for the major superpowers to yeah. run the show. Yeah, and of course we're rooting for you. <laughs> the Thank comes. you so much. <laughs> and right. then the remaining like 10 years would be, you know, in college or uh, living uh, by, the, by the beach in, my, yeah. in the last 10 years of my <laughs> life or something like that. Yeah. All right, let's come back to our country for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I would like to share with you one of my favorite words, yeah, which is hope. Mm -hmm. Because I'd like to see the possibility and yeah. I'd like to know that things can always be better. Yeah. But for some reasons, a lot of people, especially in this younger generation, mm -hmm. they kind of lost hope. Mm -hmm. More specifically mm -hmm. with like politics. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to like power through mm -hmm. everything together, mm -hmm. a lot of them are talking about moving countries. Mm -hmm. And I want to say who can blame them, mm. right? But I agree. Yeah. yeah, on the other hand, we don't want that to happen. So mm. how do we prevent that from getting worse and just kind of bring, bringing them back a little to stay with us? First of all, first thing first, you got to be able to call out that it's a trap. It's a trap that... Okay. They want you to think that politics or parliament is hopeless. It's a trap that they want you to think that politics is boring. And they want, it's a trap that they want you to think that politics is dirty and they don't want to get you involved. So when you move away from politics as far as possible, that's when they use your taxpayer money to buy things that the country doesn't need. Yeah. That's the time, you know, the time when you are least interested in politics, that's when you, they pass the law or the laws that take Thailand back to the good old days. Mm -hmm. So it's an alibi. It's a trap. It's mm -hmm. intentional mm -hmm. to make you lose hope to the boredom, to the dirtiness, mm. to the hopeless of 
politics. And, and that's, that's, what, that's, that's, <laughs> what, that's what conservatives are very good at. Mm -hmm. So once if you take yourself out of that hopelessness, out of that bubble, and you look from the top to down, and you feel like they're playing games with you, they're mm -hmm. manipulating you, they mm -hmm. want to make sure that this is long and boring and nonsense so that you want to go and look something else or you want to go to sleep, and that's when they pass the law. This is the truth. Once, if you are able to identify that and you feel like that once you lose hope, that's when you lose, and you personalize this a little bit more, and you feel like, okay, they try to make it as dirty as possible so I don't want to jump into politics. Mm. And that's when you get, you get no fresh blood yeah. or no, no right. uh, pipeline of talent yeah. of people who wanted to come and run for Bangkok mm. governor or who wants to become prime minister yeah. of the country. And I so, think that's exactly why so, you guys are so exciting, so fun, mm. so full of energy, mm -hmm. and super relevant. Mm -hmm. So it's everything opposite of that thoughts of all those traps. k a k i s t o k r s i Yeah, yeah. t h e r e s a beauty of a word, isn't it? <laughs> right, right. Just I one mean, word you, and it explains it all. You summarize everything in one word and you get it done. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you guys are doing everything in your power to get them back. I mean, all those that already lost hopes, and just try to show them the way that no, we are no, still no, have no. hopes, I mean, right? This this election is not about me; it's about you, it's about us. So, I mean, I can't do it by myself. That's for sure. That's why I need you to help, and you know, knock some doors for me and and speak about uh, how this country can be better, and try uh, again once uh, more time. I mean, if if you are right behind me, then. <clears throat> Hopefully, we uh, can get rid of that kind of question, and it doesn't have to be a question anymore. It's almost like the Philippines back in the days. I mean, when people lose hope and move out, and you and 10 of your GDP comes from remittance, right? Rather than like tourism, because like people are moving out to America and Japan and things mm -hmm. like that. So, you yeah. know, we don't want that to happen. And I mean, I mean, you could move countries, but you can't never be Thai, can you? I mean, you were born here, you were raised here. No matter how far you go, you still miss the country. Yeah. So. I mean, let's give it another shot. คำนี้ดีอินเทอร์เจนเปิดรับสมัครแล้วนะครับใครอยากจะมาฝึกงานกับคำนี้ดีฟังกันเลยว่าต้องทำยังไงและเรารับใครบ้างนะครับเรารับทั้งหมด3ตำแหน่งด้วยกันตำแหน่งที่1คือ English Content Creator และอีก2อัตรานะครับก็คือตำแหน่งเดียวกันเป็นวิดีโอ Creator ครับ English Content Creator ก็ทำหน้าที่เหมือนเป็น Creative นั่นเองนะครับเป็นคนคิดงานเป็นคนทำ Research เป็นคนเขียนสคริปต์แล้วก็ทำให้งานทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างเกิดขึ้นไม่ว่าจะเป็น Podcast ไม่ว่าจะเป็นวิดีโอก็ตามทีครับส่วนวิดีโอ Creator ก็ทำหน้าที่ตั้งแต่เรื่องของการถ่ายแล้วก็ตัดอันนี้เป็นเมนนะครับถ่ายทําแล้วก็ตัดก็คือโปรดักชันแล้วก็โพสต์โปรดักชันนั่นเองครับใครคิดว่าตัวเองเป็นมนุษย์วิดีโอไม่ว่าจะเป็นลองฟอร์มเป็นช็อตฟอร์ม horizontal vertical อะไรก็ตามทีนะครับก็สมัครเข้ามาแล้วก็ร่วมงานกับคำมีดีได้ในฐานะของเด็กฝึกงานแต่เด็กในที่นี้ไม่จำเป็นจะต้องเป็นเด็กแบบยังเป็นนักศึกษาหรือว่านักเรียนอยู่นะครับคุณก็สามารถจะเป็นคนที่จบการศึกษาแล้วก็ได้ทํางานแล้วก็ได้แต่ว่ายังอยากจะมาฝึกงานการทำคอนเทนต์กับ The Standard และคำนี้ดีเราเน้นเกี่ยวกับเรื่องคอนเทนต์ภาษาอังกฤษเพราะฉะนั้นคนที่จะสมัครเป็นฝึกงาน English Content Creator ภาษาอังกฤษก็ต้องดีใช้การได้แล้วก็ฟังพูดอ่านเขียนนะครับคล่องแคล่วสามารถคิดงานเป็นภาษาไทยและภาษาอังกฤษได้ส่วนคนที่เป็นวิดีโอครีเอเตอร์อาจจะไม่จําเป็นที่จะต้องพูดภาษาอังกฤษหรือว่ารู้ภาษาอังกฤษเก่งนะครับแต่ว่าต้องแม่นยําในเรื่องของการทําวิดีโอไว้ก่อนระยะในการฝึกงานนะครับก็คือประมาณ3เดือนครับต้องสามารถมาทํางานที่ The Standard Headquarter ได้ซึ่งก็คือสํานักงานที่ RCA นั่นเองครับทีนี้มาถึงสมัครอย่างไรนะครับง่ายๆเลยก็คือส่งเข้ามาเป็นอีเมลนะครับถ้าสมมติเกิดคุณมี CV หรือว่ามีเรซูเม่อยู่แล้วก็ไม่เป็นไรส่งแนบมาได้เลยแต่ว่าถ้าสมมติเกิดไม่มีไม่เป็นไรเราอยากจะให้คุณส่งเข้ามาโดยส่งเป็นคลิปวิดีโอครับคลิปที่คนสมัครฝึกงานในตำแหน่ง English Content Creator ที่ต้องส่งเข้ามาก็คือคลิปที่1แนะนำตัวเองเป็นภาษาอังกฤษ
ป็นเวลา1นาที1นาทีเท่านั้นนะครับแล้วก็2ครับไม่เกิน3นาทีในการตอบคําถามเราเป็นภาษาไทยหรืออังกฤษก็ได้นะครับกับคําถามที่ว่าคุณชอบอะไรในช่องคํานี้ดีบ้างและคุณไม่ชอบอะไรในช่องคำนี้ดีบ้างอีกอันหนึ่งก็คือถ้าให้คุณสร้างสรรค์อะไรก็ตามที่เป็นสิ่งใหม่และไม่เคยมีมาก่อนในช่องคำนี้ดีคุณจะทำอะไรตอบคำถามที่สองนี้ภายในเวลาไม่เกิน3นาทีภาษาอะไรก็ได้ครับ2ภาษาก็ได้ครับส่วนคนที่อยากจะสมัครฝึกงานในตำแหน่งวิดีโอครีเอเตอร์นะครับก็ให้ส่งคลิปตัวเองเข้ามาเช่นเดียวกันนะครับข้อหนึ่งก็คือแนะนำตัวเองเป็นภาษาไทยหรือจะอังกฤษก็ได้แล้วแต่ภายในเวลา1นาทีครับแล้วก็ตอบคำถามเป็นภาษาไทยหรืออังกฤษก็ได้นะครับว่าช n แนลของ YouTube ที่คุณติดตามอยู่3ช่องและ TikTok เกอร์ที่คุณติดตามอยู่อีก3คนมีใครบ้างและเพราะอะไรแล้วก็สําคัญที่สุดนะครับสำหรับคนที่จะสมัครงานในตําแหน่งวิดีโอครีเอเตอร์นะครับแนบผลงานที่คุณเคยทํามานะครับจะเป็นลักษณะแนบแบบไหนก็ได้แต่ว่าเ,เขียนโน้ตให้เรารู้ด้วยว่าสิ่งที่คุณทํานั้นคุณทําอะไรบ้างเช่นเป็นคนถ่ายหรือว่าเป็นคนเขียนสคริปต์ด้วยหรือว่าตัดต่อเฉยๆหรือว่าเกรดสีหรือทําทั้งหมดก็เล่ามาให้เราฟังด้วยนะครับส่งอีเมลแล้วก็แนบคลิปแนบต่างๆทั้งหมดนะครับมาที่ kndstudio.official@gmail.com เดี๋ยวเราขึ้นให้ที่หน้าจอนี้นะครับใส่หัวข้ออีเมลว่าสมัคร KND Intern Gen 9และวงเล็บตำแหน่งที่อยากจะสมัครนะครับซึ่งมีอยู่2อัน1 English Content Creator และ2 Video Creator ครับอยากให้คุณแนบรูปนะครับแล้วก็บอกข้อมูลต่อไปนี้ให้เราได้รู้ด้วยคือ1 Line ID ของคุณ2หมายเลขโทรศัพท์ที่ติดต่อได้ของคุณและ3 Social Media ของคุณทั้งหมดที่คุณมีรับอีเมลสมัครวันสุดท้ายนะครับคือวันศุกร์ที่3กุมภาพันธ์และเราจะประกาศผลภายในวันศุกร์ที่10กุมภาพันธ์ครับอีกคนอยากพูดอังกฤษเก่งอยากได้ที่สุดก็คือโอกาสในการพูดภาษาอังกฤษนั่นเองถ้าเราไม่ฝึกเราจะไปเก่งได้ยังไงถูกไหมแต่ทีนี้จะพูดกับใครล่ะรอบๆตัวก็มีแต่คนไทยพูดภาษาอังกฤษกับมันก็โดนล้อโดนบูลลี่กลับมาคุยกับเราคุยกับคำนี้ดีเลยเรามี speaking buddy เตรียมพร้อมที่จะพูดคุยกับคุณครับพูดไปถึงตรงนี้ได้หลายคนนึกออกแล้วมันคือถูกต้อง language cafe cycle 5กลับมาแล้วพร้อมให้บริการครับคุยกันได้เต็มๆ30นาทีภาษาอังกฤษล้วนไม่รู้จะคุยอะไรใช่ไหมเดี๋ยวเราชวนคุยเองเราเป็นคนคุยเก่งเราเป็นคนเกมเยอะกิจกรรมเยอะรับรองว่าไม่เหงาแน่นอนแล้วก็พูดกันได้ไม่หยุดแน่นอนกิจกรรมนี้เฉพาะเมมเบอร์ของ k d Club เท่านั้นนะครับถ้ายังไม่ใช่สมาชิกของ k d Club ไปที่ YouTube Channel ของเราแล้วกดปุ่ม Join ให้สมัครเป็นสมาชิก k d Club ประเภท The Clan เท่านั้นนะครับแล้วจากนั้นในฐานะสมาชิกคุณก็จะเห็นลิงก์ที่พาคุณไปลงทะเบียน Language Cafe ครับเข้าไปหาใน YouTube Community Tab นะครับและเราก็จะมีซอสเวลาที่ยืดหยุ่นมากๆครับให้คุณได้เลือกลงทะเบียนเพื่อมาพูดคุยในช่วงเวลาที่คุณสะดวกครับ Cycle 5ของ Language Cafe รอบนี้นะครับวันที่ 23-27 มกราคมนี้เท่านั้นมาก่อนในจองก่อนนะครับ